Hello, Truth Finders. It's the ghost. Welcome to Stranger World. If you like the strange and unusual happening in our world told to you in story form, you're in the right place. And if you're new to this channel, please know we have a sister channel. And so we have A Stranger World Than Fiction and They Call Me the Ghost. And we also have our podcast. Like, subscribe, and join the conversation for all things strange. On to the story. There's no doubt in my mind that a lot of you, if not most of you, are familiar with Bigfoot. I have my own jobs regarding this matter, and I've heard and seen many stories out there about the great hunt for the big man. There's one story that stands out to me among many that I have heard, and it comes to us from Oregon. There was a Marine, Jeff Boilers. Jeff went into the military and became a Marine. After his time with the military, he became a police officer. And after this, he moved on to become deputy sheriff. And then after that, he went on to become a lawyer. The guy was busy. Quite the path for a man starting out as a young Marine. This guy was reliable, credible, and just an all-around great guy. A guy who was always aware of his surroundings. And there was also some skepticism about him. He was aware and skeptical. So, for validity, this guy is the real deal. He was on the Sci-Fi Channel. He continued to do interviews. You yourself can do your own research and look this guy up. Jeff Boilers and Bigfoot. And you will see him tell his own story. And when he does, he's just telling it like it is. He's not doing it for dramatic effect. And it comes through in the way that he does it. It's a good retell of an actual event. And the way that he tells it to everyone makes it completely relatable. So many times, you know, we hear stories and see the videos that are completely made up. And they're doing that for dramatic effect and clicks. But that's not Jeff. Now that said, because it is so real in his delivery, it will actually creep you out to hear it. It's that whole idea of too much strange, too close to home phenomenon that I talk about often. It's just too much sometimes for the human brain to take in and fully believe. Along Jeff's awesome journey through life, he decides he wants to be closer to outdoor activities. He wants to be in an environment where he's closer to nature. And he picks Oregon, which is a great place to go. They have mountains. They're not too rugged. They've got lakes and streams and all the good stuff. And since Jeff was a fan of all things having to do with nature, this was a perfect place for him to go. Oregon is actually a place that he'd been to before. He was able to become a deputy sheriff up in northeastern Oregon and just thought, hey, this is a great opportunity at this time in my life. He takes the job, right? And he works there for a few months and he's happy. He's happy with his job. He's happy with his new home and everything. And Jeff shares how he loves his job and how happy he was. And as people do when they live in a place like this, it's not uncommon for someone to decide on a random day to take a bike ride or take a mountain road or go through the hills, take a hike. Well, after Jeff gets off work one day, nothing special about that day, but he was off early and he decides that instead of just going home, he wanted to get out and do something spontaneous, get out into nature. And then he thinks, all right, I'm going to take this hike and then I'll head home something refreshing, something relaxing, and he was all ready for it. And by the way, this isn't Jeff's first time in Oregon. He'd been there when he was a younger man, and he decided that he wanted to get to an area that he had been to before. So that day when he wants to go hiking, he wants to visit a certain place that he knew, and he knew it from 20 years beforehand. When he was there 20 years earlier, it wasn't all happy, though. He unfortunately had to bury one of his friends there. Since he was in Oregon, that day, for some reason, he decides he wants to give respects to those moments all those years ago. And it was a beautiful day. He wanted to do a beautiful thing. He's all set and ready to go. He jumps in his Jeep and starts to drive over to the woods, taking a trail that would lead him to this old gravesite. And just so you can picture all of this, he's heading over to the mountains. He's gonna take a trail. It's not a marked trail though. He just knew it and he knew the way. He knows his way around the wilderness. There's no worries there. It is worth noting again, though, that this trail was unmarked. It's a trail in the Cascade Mountains. Generally, people shouldn't really hike on unmarked trails. But Joe, he knew all of this, and he felt confident in his abilities. He knew that this trail was really out there, and he would even think to himself, you know, it's so not traveled, it seemed, 
that he'd sometimes wonder, was he the only one that ever was on that trail? Well, he's on it that day and he ends up at this dirt covered parking lot. And he's thinking, hey, if I get out of ways, I can go around some of this. So he's looking at his map and he's charting out this course and he decides he can do it. He gets on his way. He knows there is one harder part, but he knows he can get around that too. And then he'll make it to the grave, no problem. So with that, he grabs a drink from a nearby stream before the rest of his hike going around this clearing. So it's worth mentioning quick that this was back in 1997. So if you're thinking about how it might be to hike nowadays with your phone or maybe a GPS, well, this is back then and he doesn't have any of that. He was out there with a map and a compass. It was pretty simple. And because now he's heading off trail into the clearing, he does check his map one more time. And then he even takes the asthma oath, which helps you to make sure that you are in fact going the right direction. So a little suspicion there. All is fine. He's hiking along until he's playing with his compass at a certain point and he starts to notice that there's someone off in the distance. And this is the trail he's thinking, wow, I'm probably the only one that ever went on this trail. And then he sees someone. So he looks over and he tries to study what's going on and he sees that this person is looking back at him. And as he moves, so does this figure. It's like it's copying him. He sees that this is a very large person and it also appears to be a very hairy person. After he realizes that this person or thing is about eight feet tall or taller, he starts to go for his sidearm because he's thinking now, hey, I might need to protect myself here. He fumbles a bit, but he does get it out. But when he's all set to defend himself, he looks back up and the creature is suddenly gone. Now, some people might say, okay, well, that's good. I don't know what that was. I don't want to think about it. I just want to keep going. But he was a Marine. He was a cop. There's no way he's just letting this whole situation just slip by. He wants to find out what's going on. And so that becomes now his first and foremost goal. He has to hike up a ways to get where he saw this thing. But then it ends up dead ending at a cliff. He keeps going, trying to find this thing until he eventually realizes that he's been going for too long in the day. It's going to be dark soon. And he's also off the path he was going to take off the trail. So now he's really out there. Knowing that it will be full on dark soon, he decides that he's just going to have to stay the night or he's going to have to get out. So he decides that, all right, if I hurry, I can just go back. He can't find the creature. He can't hear him anywhere. So he just thinks, okay, I guess he got away, but I need to take care of myself and I'm going to backtrack to where I started. But as he starts to go, he does hear something. Well, I say something, but really he describes it as something so loud that it was as if a tree fell. And it wasn't making much sense at first. It kind of sounded like a large gun going off, but he chalks it up to a large tree fell. I mean, we have to remember he's a Marine. He was a policeman. Of course, this is how he's thinking. And so in the moment, he's just glad he didn't get crushed by a tree. He certainly was not thinking that he's got Bigfoot on his trail. But even still, he's bothered enough by the whole situation that he starts walking a little bit faster to get back. He finds himself stopping often, though, because he keeps hearing more branches snap and things like that. And the odd thing that he's realizing is that they're moving from behind him to in front of him. And he's thinking about this creature, but he's a logic guy. He's thinking, it couldn't have gotten from behind me to in front of me without me noticing. He stays focused though on getting back. So he veers off a little to the left to get out of the way from all these trees falling. And he tries to keep his momentum going on getting out. He's on his mission when suddenly the third tree seems to fall. It makes the same really loud noise and he turns around to find out what it was. He was getting slightly agitated and he's also getting a little paranoid at this point. He's wondering if it's the creature and if it is the creature, Maybe this thing is working with other creatures and signaling them and they're surrounding him and those are the sounds he's hearing. With these kinds of thoughts settling in, he now picks up his pace again and he's actually sprinting to get back. But he keeps hearing these snaps and these tree falls. So in the end, he's basically running to get back to the clearing. And when he gets there, he sees this deer in the middle of it. He doesn't think much of it because the deer apparently doesn't think much of him. It didn't run. He wasn't spooked or anything like that. So Joe takes a small moment to pause for a bit. He's calming down until he hears yet another tree fall behind him. So peaceful moment, done and gone. He starts running again. 
Finally, he can see his car and he's pulling out his keys trying to click away to open the locks. By this time, he's basically in a full-on panic. He gets to the car and then he realizes that all the tree falling has stopped. He opens the car, he gets inside, he slams the door, and of course he just peels out of there. He really didn't know what to do after that, and he ends up back at the sheriff's office, and he's sharing his experience. And this is sort of a reaction for him. I mean, he's talking, but he was feeling pretty embarrassed at the same time. But surprisingly, the sheriff tells him, hey, we get a lot of reports like this. We get them all the time. He tells him that in the Cascade Mountains, in the very area Joe was in, There are people that try to camp and hike there, and so many of them come back with stories just like his. He offers to do a report, but stresses that it probably will never really get followed up on. The sheriff sums it up as a phenomenon of being out in the wilderness, a phenomenon that some believe and some don't. Did Joe see Bigfoot? I am sharing this story with you now today. It took him decades to actually get out and share his actual story. And to hear him tell it, it's like he's telling you something that happened yesterday. He's so genuine, and what he's sharing comes from his own experience. When people share things like this, there are so many that don't believe them. For me, when I'm sharing my own stories of the jobs that me and my team do, I get a lot of non-believers. They just think, hey, it's simply outrageous, and no one could possibly experience or do what we have seen and done. But I will say it's the non-believers that allow those people to express their truth, people like Joe. They don't have to be put in the spotlight because the non-believers will always shoot them down. So it sort of balances out in a way. People can still share their stories, just like Jeff. And hey, look them up for yourself. See what you think. And thank you for listening. And until next time, and I will talk to you all soon.